Mr. Vice Chair, would you, do you wanna go ahead and get started? Yes, I would. All right, I'd like to call the June 11, 2020 New College Board of Directors meeting to order. Uh, Chris, I'd like to, well, first of all, I'd like to welcome everybody. Do we have any of our new board members here? Mr. Chairman, Mr. Vice Chair, we do. Um, Delegate Willett is on the line. Um, and I haven't seen anyone else. And then obviously we had a reappointment with Delegate Adams. So he's on as well. Senator Hander's on. Um, and we expect San Senator Stanley shortly. Yes. Well, welcome, sir. We're welcome to, uh, we're, we're certainly glad to have you here. And I'm sure as we get through this, get through this we uh, a board packet and a board orientation. First, let's call, call the meeting to order. And uh, Chris, would you call the Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Board of Directors meeting for the New College Institute. Today is June the 11th, 2020, and I shall be calling the roll. Delegate Les Adams. I'm here. Richard Hall. Tanya Foreman. Tanya Foreman, I'm here. Senator Emmett Present. Hager. Here. Emmett is here. Dr. Weldon Hill. Here. Naomi Hodge Muse. Here. Delegate Rodney Willett. Here. Delegate Kathleen Murphy. Senator Bill Stanley. Trene Tweedy. Here. And Janice Wilkins. Thank you. <coughs> Do we, have we currently have eight present and we have enough for a quorum. As far as public comment at this moment, I did not receive any comments from the public. Mr. Vice Chair, are you with us? Mr. Vice Chair. We can see you, but we cannot hear you, Mr. Vice Chair. Can you hear me now? Now we can hear you. I apologize. It's something that must be my connection is must be having issues. Okay. Uh, assuming everyone is here now. Let's go ahead with uh, section three, the public comment. Chris, as I understand it, we had a section where we were supposed to sign up for public comment and we did not have anyone sign up for public comment. Is that correct? Yes, sir, that is correct. Chris. Your vice chair. Mr. Vice Chair. Hey, this like he's muted there. Mm-hmm. Mr. Vice Chair.
Mr. Vice Chair. Can you hear me now? Yep. Can you hear me? Okay, good. Mr. Vice Chair, um, we're still having problems hearing you. <laughs> Mr. Vice Chair. He's trying to work on it. Karen. Yes. Can everyone hear me? Now? Yes. I just, I don't, I don't know what's wrong with the connection there. I'm just going to use my phone. I apologize to everyone for that. Okay. You're back. Okay. Back to item three, public comment. Chris, I understand uh, that you put out a note for anyone with public comment needed to sign up and we did not have anyone sign up. Is that correct? Yes, sir, that is correct. All right, moving along to item four, approval of the December 3rd, 2019 minutes. Uh, do I have a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, I believe due to the rules here, we have to have a roll call vote on all of this. So Chris, will you call the roll? Yes, sir. Delegate Les Adams. Yes, I'm here. Richard Hall. Yes, I approve. Tanya Foreman. Yes. Senator Emmett Hanger. Uh, yes. Dr. Weldon Hill? Yes. Naomi Hodge Muse? Yes. Delegate Rodney Willett? Yes, I approve. Delegate Kathleen Murphy? Senator Bill Stanley? Trinae Tweedy? Yes. Janice Wilkins? All right, the meeting minutes from December 3rd, 2019 are so approved. Uh, I'm going to move item five, for the chairman's update to later in the meeting when Senator Stanley is on. And we will go ahead and go into item six, the executive director's report, Ms. Karen Jackson. Uh, item A, the Baldwin building purchase update. Thanks, Mr. Vice Chair. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, this has obviously been a topic that's been going on for quite some time. Um, I have also on the call Mr. Mike Nolan from the Department of General Services, as well as Deb Love, who is our Attorney General's Office um, representative, who has been working hand in glove with Christina and myself throughout this process. Um, we have been on calls with the team, and the team is larger than just us, but also including the Foundation, the Foundation's Council all working on a weekly basis to tie down all the last minute pieces and get everything lined up for the building purchase by NCI and the takeover there of the facilities. So I've asked actually Mike Nolan from DGS, who is um, the entity in the state government who is representing NCI through this purchase process, um, to give us a brief update from his perspective. They've been dealing with deeds and, and leases and the whole back end of the of the purchase once the deal was completed. Um, and so I've asked him just to say, give you a brief overview. Um, we'll keep it as high level as possible. Um, but just to bring you up to speed on that, because we do have, I believe, a, a resolution, um, Mr. Vice Chairman, that needs to be dealt with that will um, 
a lot more sense once Mike brings us up to speed. Mike? Thank you, Karen. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, happy to report uh, the property was put under contract uh, beginning of March of this year, and we immediately started um, through the due diligence period uh, phases with the seller, New, uh, New College Foundation. Um, we've been meeting more recently uh, on a weekly basis with, uh, as Karen suggested, the, the seller and their counsel. Things are moving along very smoothly, um, as smooth as could be expected. The, the greatest hurdle was um, the building, as you may know, was construction of the building was supported by several grants. There were uh, eight different uh, grant funding partners or grants uh, that supported it. And we needed consent from each of those grant partners um, for the grant obligations and benefits uh, to transfer from the foundation uh, to NCI. We've gotten through uh, four of the eight and uh, making good progress on the remaining four. In addition to that, there were certain deed restrictions. Um, you may recall the city of Martinsville donated the land on which the property was improved. Uh, they had uh, in their donation had some restrictions in their deed, some of which uh, we needed to be removed and they've been cooperating and have in fact passed a resolution uh, to relinquish certain of those restrictions. Uh, as we continue to work through the last four uh, grant consents, we're simultaneously working through other due diligence, uh, including environmental studies, uh, uh, land survey, title, and all of that's going smoothly too. We expect that that could be wrapped up as soon as the first week or so of July. Um, funding's in place and approved, and we hope to close on it subject to these last few grant consents uh, sometime early to mid-July. Uh, in the meantime, we have uh, engaged with the foundation. There is uh, one tenant in the building. It's the Economic Development Corporation, and uh, we've engaged with them. They are interested in remaining there as a tenant. That will be an income source for NCI ongoing. Uh, their lease currently ends the end of this month, June 30th, with an automatic renewal. They've expressed an interest to renew for the following year and then have automatic renewals from there on out. They, they weren't willing to commit to a long-term uh, lease, but at least on a year-to-year -year basis for now. We've also made arrangements um, to transition management of the property. Uh, the foundation had been managing it with a full-time employee and, and perhaps a second one who they no longer have in their employee and, and they've been managing it uh, administratively, uh, maybe not as well as we would like. So we've made arrangements with a property management company to take over on the day of closing. Um, contracts are already negotiated and ready to be signed so that they can be up and running uh, as of the date of settlement. Uh, any questions? Hearing no questions, uh, Karen. Do you want to have, do you have any comment uh, on this or would you like to go straight to the resolution? Uh, just briefly, I, I want to thank Christina Reed and, and her team and everybody that's been involved for their commitment to this. There's been a lot of detail work that has had to be done. Richard, I want to thank you for getting us to the point where the deal was done and it was time to take over and manage to get all the, the back end stuff in line. But I think this has gone more smoothly than I had hoped um, or had thought it would. So I just want to say publicly thank you to Christina. Thank you to everybody on the team, lest I leave somebody out for their commitment to this. Deb, Mike, everybody on the, those two teams as well and everybody that's been involved in this. I'm very excited to think that we are now less than or right at a month away from actually owning the building that we were in because it will make a massive amount of it would give us a, ma a massive amount of flexibility 
um, for the sorts of things that we should be going into the future. And so I'm, I'm relieved and grateful that we're, we're this close and look forward to bringing this to a, a speedy and successful conclusion. So thank you. Thank you so much, Karen. All right, I'm going to read the resolution that I would like to make. Uh, it's rather long, but it's necessary. Uh, acquisition of the Dana O. Baldwin Block from the New College Foundation, adopted June 11, 2020. Resolved that the Board of Directors of New College Institute hereby authorize and approve the acquisition of real property located in the city of Martinsville and known as the Dana O. Baldwin Block, City of Martinsville, tax map number 32, parenthesis 01 D-B, consisting of 5.095 acres, together with certain improvements, personal property, fixtures, the property as provided in the real purchase agreement dated as of December 30th, 2019. The purchase agreement between New College Foundation as seller and the Commonwealth of Virginia Common De Department of General Services as purchaser and a copy of which is available at this meeting. Resolve further that the conclusion that due diligence on the purchase of the property did not reveal any material issues shall be conclusively evidenced by the execution of closing documents by any of the persons authorized below. Resolve further that the title to the property be taken subject to certain mortgage in favor of the United States Department of Commerce Economic Development Administration in the amount of $1.75 million and to such matters of record as found to be appropriate by persons authorized below, including without limitation certain restrictive covenants benefiting the city of Martinsville, which have been discussed and are available at this meeting, and a lease to the Martinsville Henry County Economic Development Corporation. Resolve further that title to the property shall be held in the name of the Commonwealth of Virginia New College Institute, an educational institution of the Commonwealth of Virginia as provided by Code of Virginia 2.2-1148 and 23.1-3113 subsection C. Reserve, resolve further that the board intends to continue the use of the property in manner consistent with its charge under the laws of the Commonwealth, including but not limited to Code of Virginia 231, 23.1-3111, formerly 23-231.30, and with NCI practice to date. Resolve further that in connection with the acquisition of the title of the property and the grants and obligation in those grants that are listed in Schedule A attached herein may be transferred and accepted by NCI. Resolve further that in her capacity as interim executive director, Karen Jackson is authorized to enter into all such contracts necessary or expedient to the maintenance, operation, stewardship of the property, including property management, agreement, for property management of the property. Resolve further that in her capacity as interim executive director, Karen Jackson or her written designee, the authorized representatives are individually authorized and empowered to execute and deliver all such documents or instruments, including but not limited to a deed accepting title to the property, a bill of sale accepting title of personal property related to the functioning of the property, an assignment of contracts related to the property an assignment of leases related to the property and to take such action in each in his or her individual discretion deemed necessary or appropriate in order to effectuate the intent of the foregoing resolutions in accordance with the purchase agreement. Schedule A, item one, tobacco indemnification and community revitalization commission center of excellence grant 2597 dated May 22nd, 2014, in the amount of $5 million. Number two, Appalachian Regional Commission grant administered by the Virginia Department of Housing and Community Development, dated September 11th, 2013, in the amount of $500,000. United States Department of Agricultural Rural Business Enterprise grant, dated June 2013, in the amount of $99,000. 
And lastly, number four, the United States Department of Commerce Economic Development Incentive Marketing excuse me, Agreement and Mortgage in the amount of $1.75 million dated March 28, 2013, and recorded clerk's office at the Circuit Court of Martinsville, Virginia, on July 3, 2013, as instrument number 1300750. That is the resolution before uh, this board today. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, would you call the roll? Chris. Delegate Les Adams. Yes. Richard Hall. Yes. Tanya Foreman. Senator Emmett Hanger. Yes. Dr. Weldon Hill. Yes. Naomi Hodge Muse. Yes. Delegate Rodney Willett. Yes. Delegate Kathleen Murphy. Senator Bill Stanley. Trene Tweedy. Janice Wilkins. Vice Chairman, we have six. And do we have a do we have a quorum? Just to make sure. Yes, six this, is needed. This is Delegate Kathleen Murphy. I'm on this call. Wonderful, Delegate Murphy. Delegate Murphy, would you thank well? Thank you for uh, chiming in and uh, welcome. Thanks. I'm sorry I'm late. I was on another call. Uh, we have just recorded a vote on a resolution to acquire a building and allow uh, Karen Jackson to uh, effectuate that. I don't think, uh, uh, being that you didn't hear it, I think you, we have to offer you the ability to vote, but an abstention is okay or? Abstention is just fine since I don't know anything about it. <laughs> okay, that's good. All right, that moved, the, the motion passes. Uh, I would like to say congratulations to everyone on this board and everyone who's been involved with this because this is uh, obviously something that no one really thought would ever see this day and it really set the future up of NCI and I would like to note Emmett we did get that reduced price just for humor there. <laughs> Very good. Uh, good, jo good job. Good job. Yeah, we're, we're very pleased. All right. Uh, congratulations, everyone. Moving along, uh, Karen, back to you. Branding and marketing update. Yeah, so I, I think you can go to the next slide, Brian. There we go. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, since, we've, since I've been at NCI, one of the things that we wanted to concentrate on was really taking a look at the programming that we had in place and trying to find a way to focus on NCI's abilities, the uniqueness of being a higher education center, um, the uniqueness of what we had in the high bay and really the programs that we were already offering, but they weren't presented necessarily as uniformly or um, in a way that was sometimes even understandable to people. So what I wanted to do, and, and we've worked hard with the staff and brought, we've actually brought on, we mentioned um, at the last board meeting, we were bringing on um, a media and a marketing company to help us with this, to really formulate our messaging. And so this won't be the last time that you hear about this, but what I wanted to do for today's meeting is just give you kind of an indoctrination of where the thought process is headed. Um, we are going through the process of identifying a new logo for NCI, and that will be sent to you following this, not immediately following the meeting, but in the next day or so. And we'd like to get your opinions. We've narrowed it down as a staff to two. And so we'd like to get your input as to which one you think we should move forward with NCI. But in looking at the programs and the messaging and the, and the work that NCI has been doing, we were really able to isolate it into the buckets that you see there. And you see that 
six was the original number that was there. Obviously with COVID coming along, um, we ended up adding a seventh pillar of success and I'll tell you about that in a second. But we've isolated our activities into those six buckets that you see. And so as we go forward in our messaging, as we go forward into new program development, signing on new partners, this is the guiding principle, principle document, or at least you know the matrix that we will look at and say, does it fit into one of these categories? If it doesn't fit, then we have to evaluate whether it's the right thing for NCI to be doing. So this just grounds us a little bit and gives us the opportunity to have those conversations. Um, it has been an interesting you know, process to go through this, especially in this COVID-19 environment. Um, I will add that I think one of the unique pieces about NCI that really came to light during the beginning of the COVID is everybody was trying to figure out how to move their training online. Universities were really struggling with what to do about, you know, keeping students on campus, moving them off. Fortunately, we don't have dorms, you know, a blessing in this situ situation. Yeah, they have to deal with that. But NCI's programming that we had been chasing and the partners that we had been working with to get onboarded, and you'll hear a little bit of that from Steve Keyser later, really positioned NCI well because most of the programming that we were going to be bringing online for the fall was either online or hybrid. Some were going to be in person that we've had to jockey, you know, schedules and some have gone from in person now to online. But unlike the other higher ed centers that are very, very heavily grounded in hands on assets, welding machines, um, you know, anything that requires a student to be at a massive piece of equipment all had to be shut down. NCI, on the other hand, we were offering training in IT and you know, giving people the chance to even figure out if IT was a real career. Um, so I'm not going to steal Steve's thunder, but really, and Brian Page too will touch on some things that NCI has been able to do during the COVID response that have been quite unique for us, to us actually. And so I think we've started convincing people that we might be the youngest of the higher ed institutes, but we're in part the most nimble. Um, because our model and our history isn't surrounded and there's absolutely nothing wrong with what the other higher ed institutions have done and the way they've set themselves up, but they're much more akin to having that have to be at a piece of equipment um, sort of pathway. And so we're, we're fortunate that we've been able to continue a lot of our programming. I think everybody that's on this call that staff would agree that we've probably been busier during this COVID period than we were actually even when we were in the building. And so that's a that's a uniqueness that a lot of people haven't been able to to talk about quite frankly. So I, any if anybody has any questions on these, you know, on these six areas um, that we were looking at, it's it's merely just a guidance document if anybody was at fast track then you would have seen that seen some of these banners show up there but we're we're very excited to have this opportunity and i apologize for my house phone ringing but um we are very excited to have this as a grounding document and we're looking forward to first of all today to tell you more about what is being done in each one of these sections but also to to give you the opportunity to see how you might be able to help us build out even more activities in this in these areas. So with that, I think we're going to keep moving. Brian, next slide. And I keep going again, if you don't mind. Keep going. All right, I'm going to turn it over to Rebecca. And Rebecca will, um, I'm, Rebecca, I'm not sure that you were on at our last board meeting. I'd like to introduce Rebecca to you. She is our new web master guru online marketing person and she's going to be giving you um, an update on some of the things that we've been able to do regarding the website online resources and so rebecca over to you all right thank you karen and um uh, appreciate uh the time to just speak a little bit about what we're doing um in response to uh covid19 um and actually um some of these things are Karen's idea. So she's just been fantastic giving us ideas and encouraging us uh, in trying to promote NCI and uh, the community as well. So 
Um, one of the first things we've uh, put together, and I'm gonna share my screen um, if that's okay. Uh, let's see. And uh, on our website, let me find the right one. This is the, uh, let's see, can everyone see that? The NCI website? Um, make sure, can everyone see that? Yes. All right, great. All right, so we put together a, a list of resources, um, and it's uh, available through a link on the front page here, for, uh, for educators, uh, teachers, students, parents, uh, caregivers, to be able to sort of a all-inclusive list. Well, it's not all-inclusive, it's um, ever-growing, but we tried to create a, a big list here of resources available to help people have, who are now having to learn from home or um, just, are, you know, maybe not sure how to teach a certain subject. So, and we've broken it out. We've got uh, resources for educators, uh, and then we've got some local ones to the Martinsville, Southwest, Southern Virginia area, um, some state and federal resources, um, and then general ones um, that are kind of touch on several topics. Uh, so like uh, Microsoft, um, PBS Kids, National Geographic, games that are learning uh, type games you know, if you need to keep your kids busy for a little while. <laughs> um, and then we break it down into specific subjects, reading, math, um, history, science, um, health and wellness, computer science, foreign languages, special needs, and then testing preparations. And then finally, we added some enrichment links. Uh, these are uh, virtual field trips, tours uh, of museums, uh, musicals, uh, Google Earth. So just a variety of things that we thought would be helpful, both, uh, you know, helpful to educate, but also fun, creating a fun environment to learn um, while people are stuck in quarantine or stuck at home trying to learn. So um, the uh, team at NCI has been just absolutely fabulous getting these links sent in uh, and then Brian Stanley's compiled them and sends them over to me and I uh, just get them online, make sure the links are working. So the team has been fantastic, you know, uh, constantly adding to this list. So we're excited about that. Um, and another thing um, we've added under student resources is the uh, virtual Virginia College tour. Um, some of you may have received a press release about this, uh, went out last week. But in Virginia, many of the universities and colleges have virtual tours. And so, oh, pardon me, my mouse is being touchy. But if you wanted to maybe take a campus visit and you weren't able to, um, a lot of universities have tours on their website so you could uh, click on a link and the university or college will pop up there and you can click and um, go visit that college or university so uh, this is virginia techs they have a really well put together uh, virtual tour you can take the tour and sort of you know look around see what's going on at virginia tech um, many of the universities have their self-hosted others are hosted on other sites and uh, like the online resources, this is also a growing list of, uh, as colleges and universities, as we come across their virtual tours, we'll try to add these on as well. Um, and then, you know, in the news, we noticed, you know, Roanoke Star picked it up and posted it on their site as well. So that's been kind of neat. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing. And I think there's one more slide. Um, if uh, Brian could show that one. One more thing we tried to do on our social media was to highlight graduates who were from partner universities uh, with NCI. So here you can see JMU, uh, Longwood are a couple that we tried to highlight. Um, these are graduates, you know, obviously graduates um, college and uh, high school this year are not really uh, having the year they were hoping for. So we tried to highlight some and point out the degrees that uh, they received. So those are just a few of the things that we've tried to do in response to COVID-19. Um, and I'm gonna hand it over to uh, Brian Pace, who's gonna talk to you now about uh, PPE. So thank you. Okay, before, before you go, this is Karen. Um, you talk a little bit about what we're doing with the website for NCI in the next six weeks or so? Yes, we are um, bringing it in-house and working to redesign and make it much easier to um, update, maintain than what, uh, than what we're uh, currently working with. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to pull in all the registrations for events, um, uh, programs. People can register through the site. 
instead of having to call in. So hopefully be seamless and then we'll also be able to um, get contact information so that we can be sending these people, uh, you know, students or people who have shown interest, we can send them out uh, upcoming events, upcoming programs that they might be interested in. Um, so uh, it also will highlight our events. It'll be a better way of um, highlighting news, press releases that come out will be um, seen easier and it will show up better in our search engines uh, for, during search engine results. So uh, that's something that we want to um, highlight as well. So I don't know if that answers or is a good uh, overview, but if anyone has any questions, I can happy to answer. Thanks, Rebecca. Okay. Brian, before we move on, I think we, Mr. Vice Chair, with your indulgence, I think we have um, Senator Stanley. Mr. Chairman, are you on? I knew he was on. Okay, Brian, keep going. Okay, Sorry. thank you. My apologies. No problem. Good afternoon. Uh, I am Brian Pace. I am the coordinator of advanced manufacturing here at NCI. I just want to share uh, a unique opportunity we found that we had and how that's kind of played out over the last couple of months, really. So as the COVID-19 virus began to spread to our country and to our state, uh, we realized that we could leverage some of our advanced manufacturing assets to support healthcare and frontline workers. And so with that, we began to examine how we could help the most and it would quickly came to a point to realize that it was be through supplying PPE. So how could we do that? We began to look at our 3D printing capabilities and through that we focused on printing face shields. Uh, and then as we researched further, we found that the National Institutes for Health had a print exchange on their website where you could go and look and see what people throughout the country were doing to help this crisis. And one of the things they had was uh, printed materials that had actually gone through a, a clinical review. And one of those being, or several of those being face shields. And so we found one that I felt would work best for us and we adopted that. And so at the time we had plenty of 3D printers. Uh, we had a large supply of filament. And so we immediately started printing the headbands for the face shields. And then the only thing that we didn't have immediately available to us was a plastic shield that goes onto the, the face shield. We were able to find some of that material at a local office supply, but uh, that became scarce very quickly. And we realized that, or I realized that there were a lot of people obviously in the country that were doing this to help out and, and the need was, was great. And so it was really becoming hard to get that material. But uh, we were able to work that out uh, we were able to find a local, I mean, a uh, form a partnership with Canon of uh, Virginia, and I appreciate Karen for her help in making that happen. And they wound up providing us with 700 clear face shields, which were cut to size, and that was a tremendous help for us. They also had some pre, uh, 3D printed uh, printing equipment, and so they also printed 500 of the headbands. So what we did was, after we started in production, we said, well, where could we meet the biggest need? And we worked to find that the biggest need we felt like was in the Southwest Virginia area. So we worked with the Virginia Rural Health Association and the Health Wagon to get face shields to the healthcare providers and front, load work, front line workers in Southwest Virginia. And I'm really proud to tell you that as of today, we have produced and shipped over 1,700 face shields with the majority of those going to Southwest Virginia. You see on your screen there, that is a obviously a map of Virginia. Where you see those stars are localities where we have shipped face shields. Uh, I guess we started shipping, and I think it was probably towards the 1st of April, maybe the end of, of March. But those stars are localities, so it may be even within those localities, we may have had multiple places that we, sh we shipped the shields. Uh, we ship shields to hospitals, we ship shields to uh, health clinics, doctor's office, funeral services, uh, you name it, we were able to meet needs and it really has been a very rewarding thing. So as we move forward, we're collaborating with other possible partners to, to continue to supply and meet the PPE need, which I don't think that's just going to go away, it's, it's going to continue to be there. 
And we just recently, and I want to thank John Maxwell for this, uh, got in touch with uh, Hacksburg. If you're familiar with that, it's a maker space located in Blacksburg, Virginia. And then two weeks ago, they delivered 500 of the clear plastic shields to us, and they had also been cut to size. And so that helped us tremendously. And so we're ready now to continue printing if, if the need is there. And uh, so it's really it positioned us to meet any immediate, immediate need pretty quickly. So I will say, and I want to thank our team here at NCI, it's definitely been a team effort. Uh, we've been able to uh, produce these. We've kept our social distance. We've taken every precaution to make sure that everyone was safe. Uh, we also set up a schedule where if some of the staff wanted to volunteer and come and be a part of that, and many were able to. Um, so uh, that was really rewarding to be able to work together and, and know that we could do this. And I just say there's been a lot of positive results that have come out of that uh, from new training opportunities to I think the really exciting thing is the new partnerships that we have formed just in the state of Virginia here over this last two months. And so I really look forward to continuing that as we go forward. And I, one other thing I want to say, uh, many of you may know, uh, NCI has a robotics team, a first robotics team. I've had the privilege of being able to mentor that for over 18 years. And I guess if you want to say a silver lining of, of what happened, obviously, we were able to go to one competition, but then everything stopped and we were never able to do anything there again. But I will say that gave us the opportunity and the time and the resources to focus on these shields. And so, again, something positive came out of that. But again, I wanna thank uh, the staff here and Karen for the support and the way we've been able to reach out and meet a need here. Any questions? Thanks, Brian. Okay, I think next we have John Maxwell. Yes, thank you, Brian. And I'm John Maxwell. I am the coordinator for Health and Human Services here for New College Institute. And we have always had a good partnerships with different organizations that we have hosted there at our facility. Uh, and also provided education with continuing medical education or hosting symposiums such as the Alpha Gal Symposium that we partner with Virginia Tech on or with uh, our gastrointestinal uh, uh, education that we focus on with uh, Virginia Commonwealth University in which we broadcasted out from, from NCI, I guess we broadcasted to close to 20 different uh, sites around the state. And so this last year, we had also uh, hosted the Virginia Rural Health Association, which I feel lucky enough to be the treasurer of. And as a board member, uh, we've really gained a great partnership with them in helping us to uh, continue to be a, uh, an involved partner throughout the state, especially with the, the headbands and the, the face shields that we've been producing with all of our help, it has really uh, gained us some great notoriety and it's just really provided care and, and safety to the staff around the state. So one of the neat things now that we, since we haven't been in the building, we've been focusing on shifting a lot of our uh, conferences online, such as the Alpha Gal Symposium will be online this year and our, with our partnership with Virginia Tech. But we also have several courses that we've had online uh, and that we've developed over the last couple of years, really focusing on telehealth and telemental health. And so this really has, we've been prevent, preparing for this time for the last couple of years. And so it has been a, a busy time, uh, really since about January, uh, with our online courses, in that we offer uh, competencies and certifications for staff, for really anyone around the nation. And we actually have uh, enrollees that are global now. Uh, we're in six foreign countries. Uh, where our certain new college institute certificates are hanging on the walls there. And so 
they provide competencies for staff to be able to perform telehealth services uh, to go in your file and to provide the education and the basic understanding of how to perform a telehealth visit and how to set up telehealth programs and also with, in particular, more specifically, with telebehavioral health. And so it's really been an exciting time for me and that and for all of us as this really has taken the, the, the entire staff to keep up with our demand that we've had in our courses in that we have had many people right here in Martinsville and Ridgeway and our, our neighbors here uh, in Henry County have taken our courses and also across Virginia have taken the courses that we offer as well. But one of the interesting things that we did not see was that as we were, as people were hearing about our courses and hearing about New College Institute and our certificates that we have and our competencies that we have, we're now in 37 different states across the nation. And like I said, in six foreign countries. And so New College Institute with our online courses and our competencies in just general uh, telehealth, uh, has really grown and it actually gained the attention with Johns Hopkins uh, School of Medicine. And so we have, we have been working closely with Johns Hopkins and where they are, are embedding some of our courses into their education, their online education. And uh, they've also, we've also listed their courses on our website as well. And so that is a new partnership that is outside of Virginia, but is bringing great uh, capabilities to New College Institute to expand even further and provide services and provide quality education online right here in Virginia uh, that's based here in Virginia that we're very proud of. And so we've actually also worked with several of our universities and colleges here in the state of Virginia to build in our certifications into their curriculums. And so when students are graduating with allied health in any of the allied health fields that could go into telehealth or use in particular with uh, telemental health, our certifications are being built in and those students will have our New College Institute uh, coordinated uh, certificates with our partnerships uh, right there built into their curriculum. So it's really exciting of all the different uh, areas that people have come to us from around the state uh, and around the nation to help provide them with this education. And so we look forward to being, uh, to keep participating with all of our, our state institutions in providing uh, online resources and our symposiums that we coordinate and growing even more. And it's just a, uh, it's a busy time and it's an exciting time to provide this need that people are actually are really encouraged and excited to visit with New College Institute to, uh, to provide that need for them. And so if anyone has any questions, I'm more than happy to, to help answer any. All right, if not, I would like to introduce Steve Kieser. He is our uh, Coordinator of Education and Community Engagement. Steve? Yeah, hang on a second. I'm sorry, can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Steve. Great, thanks. I'm sorry. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'd like to start off by um, talking about the academic programs, and I, I want to start with um, our program that we were able to um, get in August of last year, and, and it, that was a Virginia Tech doctoral program, um, and report that that program is going very well. Um, and the reason I bring that up, it pairs very well with um, our other education programs. We have, we now have a doctorate, uh, a master's, and a bachelor's in education. Um, so we're really happy about that along with our Longwood social work program. Um, but moving forward, 
um, our new programs that we have, uh, we have been able to have a partnership with the University of Virginia um, through their continuing education program. Uh, this is a bachelor's in interdisciplinary studies. Um, this particular program has five, five concentration areas that the student can branch off into. Um, and those are business, cybersecurity, early childhood, uh, healthcare, and information technology. Um, the program designed for the University of Virginia's continuing education program is very unique in that um, they tend, it's a little different from the on-campus program where you have to have a very high GPA, uh, 4.0 or, or higher to get in. Uh, this particular program uh, attracts a more non-traditional student. And I believe their requirement is a 2.5. Um, so it's an online program. Um, and so we're, we're excited about the different possibilities and areas that, that they offer. Um, also, we were able um, to get, and, and I'm, we're not supposed to say this, but I give kudos to Karen, and, and that is um, through the Weeman, through Weeman Mary, uh, their Mason School of Business, we were able to get an MBA, um, and we're scheduled to have an information session on that on June 17th. Uh, and that is uh, also an online program, again, from the we, uh, from William and Mary University. Um, thirdly, we for some time we have been asked uh, uh, by educators to bring a counseling of education program here, which is really difficult because a lot of um, universities do not like to bring um, counseling education off grounds, only because they can feel it on ground. Uh, but Bluefield College reached out to Karen um, and they are, uh, we have already had one information session with them. They're bringing a counseling education program to us with a track in mental counseling. Um, we've had, as I said, one Zoom information session with them and uh, it's gone very well. Um, Randy Smith, that program is really great with. So we're really hopeful for uh, our Bluefield partner and our counselor's education program. Um, when Karen uh, Jackson arrived uh, to Martinsville, one of the first things that I can remember her commenting on is that we want to make a footprint into cybersecurity. And I can tell you as assistant here in Martinsville, there's a, there's a great need for that. Um, and uh, so what we began doing, and, and I think Richard had a couple of uh, workshops and speakers down in the first part of the fall in October from Virginia Tech. And we've had really good luck with Virginia Tech. We are working with uh, Dave Raymond and the Virginia Tech Cyber Range. The Cyber Range is a, a very secure site that students can go into and learn about cybersecurity and how to protect protect uh, themselves from cyber. Um, and so we, we're, we've had two trainings um, on the cyber range where Dave Raymond was able to do that with us. Uh, one was in, uh, I guess, early January. We were supposed to have a face-to-face -face one in late spring, and that had to be moved to virtual. And I was really concerned about uh, getting the numbers for that because we were looking for K-12 lead teachers but we were able to get 20 lead teachers from our area. And um, I'm, I'm very encouraged to report that Henry County Public Schools will have a cyber range on site next year. And they have hired a, an educator for that particular program who is awesome. Um, and they've already reached out to us about some field trips over to NCI uh, involving that. So this, I'm really excited about that and hopefully other our other school systems will follow suit with the cyber range. Um, Radford University also has a uh, cyber impact program. It's an online program, a certificate program where students can learn about cyber in the workplace. So Radford also is a partner of ours. Um, in terms of teacher education training, um, 
we have a, a part-time individual that we've hired who was a director of technology in Henry County Schools that has an excellent relationship with VISTI. VISTI is the Virginia Society of Technology and Education. Um, and we uh, were scheduled to do a lot of face-to-face -face training with them. They're a great partner. They're one of those uh, partners that you don't have to do a lot of encouraging to the public schools to get teachers to come to them. They're very well known. They do a lot of work with the Department of Education. So many of those um, programs that we have have been moved to virtual. Um, we're scheduled in October to have a leading ed, ed forum with them. I think it's October 6th and 7th. And then another um, VISTI training called Learner, Learner Pelosi for educators. Um, and again, these may have to be done virtually, but it, we're happy to have them as a partner with us now because I think they'll be very effective in working with our, our, our teachers. Um, we still have a partnership with ODU, with STEM. We, um, for those of you, I think that came over, some of our board members came over with the MX trailer from Newport News um, showing some of the advanced manufacturing uh, skills that are needed for young people um, from Newport News and then ODU uh, brought an excellent professor up to, to work with the students on uh, the lessons in, inside. Um, and that, that particular, we're still working with them on that particular program, um, as well as a, a team engineering day. Um, generally every year we uh, attend the SOVA Career Expo in Chatham, Virginia. Um, we're a partner with that. That probably will have to be done virtually somehow or, or move to a different date because that usually is a September fall event. Um, um, we will continue on uh, with our Reading for Life program. This puts us in the elementary schools. Um, we've been do doing this for some time and we've had uh, the Chamber of Commerce has reached out to us and, and asked if they, if they can be a partner and support that financially. Um, lastly, it's real important for us to keep our um, students engaged in the learning process during the summer. Um, we are still scheduled, we were scheduled to have a cyber, cyber patriot camp um, face to face in July. Uh, we were concerned about whether that would um, take place or not, but we, Karen has been able to get that moved to a virtual method. And uh, so we plan on having that as for middle and high school students. Um, we will do some other things this summer. We'll have a mobile book, book drive through uh, for students to keep them in the re reading and, 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 and in the process of learning. Uh, I've worked with um, area Eng an excellent area English teacher. She's actually one of our uh, adjunct professors and she has um, designed some creating writing um, uh, for us that we can post on our website for our students as well as some, um, they can do poems, music, or still pictures that they can post of how the COVID-19 uh, has affected their life. Um, we have two um, camp in the box. These are uh, camps that we can provide to students and they can do from home since they can't, since we can't have them in face to face. And we'll be, um, just today, I uh, sent an email to Rebecca from someone I contacted with that is, um, has some outstanding uh, summer camps put together that we'll continue to put up on our website uh, so that parents can go to them as they, as they need them in the summertime. Um, so right now that's, that's where we are and, and we look forward to the future. And, and we have, and as Karen said, we have really uh, been busy uh, virtually. It's amazing how busy we've been, but um, we feel good about things. So, so does anybody have any questions? Thanks, Steve. Nice job, Steve. Next slide, Brian. Now, before we do the budget, Senator Stanley, are you able to I see you, but can you speak to us? Yeah, can you hear me? There you go. Hello, uh, uh, Ms. Jackson. It's, it's always good to talk to you again. And uh, 
I want to welcome everybody who's here and, and I want to thank my vice chairman for handling the most important thing that we had, uh, which was adoption of the uh, uh, resolution for acquisition of the Daniel uh, Baldwin building. And so I think moving forward, I, I listened to it on the phone. I couldn't unmute myself uh, to talk and vote, but please, if you would uh, record me as an eye on that resolution as well. Um, and I certainly want to um, welcome the new um, delegates who have joined the board. Um, we're very excited to have you on. We certainly want to thank uh, Delegate Poindexter and Delegate Marshall for their service on this board. This may have already been spoken of uh, while I was in court trying a case, um, but certainly uh, in particular, Delegate Marshall has been on the NCI, NCI board since 2005 when NCI was uh, conceived by the General Assembly. So um, there's a lot of good institutional knowledge that, uh, that he brought to the table every, at every meeting. Uh, he had NCI's uh, best interest always at the forefront, as did uh, Delegate Poindexter. And so those will be, uh, not only are we grateful for their service, but we will certainly miss them as well. So, uh, but we're excited about the, the new members of this board. I, I think as you learn, as you go along, uh, if I may say, uh, uh, Karen, uh, having Karen on board has been um, transformational for New College. We have gone through much in the past two years, uh, in the past three years of my chairmanship, but especially in the past two years in trying to make sure that we were at the forefront of providing a high quality education, especially for those uh, young men and women in Martinsville, Henry County and the inner cities and in the, in the rural areas who might otherwise not think of uh, an education beyond high school uh, due to their financial circumstances. So, uh, and, and not just an education, but certification programs, credential programs, uh, that will make New College a leader and on the forefront of how education is now transmitted to our, uh, to our young people and even our displaced workers and our transitional, uh, non-traditional students as well. So uh, we're very excited about what's going on uh, and especially the acquisition of the building, which was one of our uh, goals from the first day that I was uh, elected chairman. And to see that now coming to fruition, I think that's a huge asset. It's a shot in the arm. Uh, for NCI. Uh, it's going to provide good funding uh, for our foundation. And I think psychologically, it shows a commitment on behalf of the Commonwealth of Virginia uh, to the educational needs after um, high school uh, in the South Side region. So I'm very thrilled about that. Uh, very happy where we are right now. And just absolutely uh, thrilled to have Karen Jackson as our executive director. Uh, and I see on the screen, uh, Ms. Jackson, that it says budget update, but if I may, um, I'm sure we can update the budget, but the one thing I'm going to suggest is <clears throat> due to COVID-19, due to the shutdown, due to the change in the Virginia economy, uh, I think everybody understands that we're going to have uh, significant changes with regard to the budget. Uh, a budget was approved by the House and Senate that included our general funding. Uh, there may be cuts from that, uh, and Karen, you can tell me if I'm, I'm wrong or I'm um, off, the, off on something that's not as important. But I think that maybe if we're getting ready to approve a budget, uh, we may want to wait and see uh, what the effect of the shutdown and the economic downturn has on our budget as it will on the budget at large uh, for the Commonwealth of Virginia. I anticipate, and I think the delegates and senators who are on this call, uh, that we're probably going to have a special session to address some of these matters, that there will be matters of funding that cannot be satisfied by the governor's uh, power to do so after a budget been passed to, to, to cut certain programs up to a certain percent. So uh, that's my two cents on the budget. So thank you for the time, Karen, I appreciate it. So Senator, Mr. Chairman, both titles in one. Um, <laughs> your screen actually says boss, so I'll have to add that one to it as well. Um, you're right, and I mean, I think you know, Christine and I have had, she will provide, a, an, a, a, you know, the update on the budget as it stands right now. I think for NCI, this is a particularly critical time. Um, I, you've heard just a snippet of what we've been able to do with the existing staff. We did have an additional staff position in the monies that were swept because of COVID. So we had another body in there that we were going to add. We currently have two additional programs that I can't get into um, the Tobacco Commission, thanks to you, Delegate Marshall, um, we're able to pull together $100,000 there for a program with Amazon Web Services that we'll be announcing. 
We have another one in the coffer that is under NDA that is a, it's a major partnership for, ND, for NCI. Um, but we're on that growth curve now. We're bringing in more partners as we've spoken in the past. Um, and I think the staff would, uh, there's one staff member particularly that every time I say something, he says, I make him nervous. Um, I'm okay with that. And I think he's, you know, I think it's tamped down a little bit um, over time, but the opportunities now are coming to us. And so budget cuts that may come our way, you know, everybody will say it's gonna harm them and it will, it's gonna be tough for everyone. But I think for NCI, we're starting to hit a stride, but we're also starting to hit a cap with the amount of work that can be done by the st staff that we currently have. So as we set forth, what you're gonna see with the budget is something that is that Christina and I have and you know with input from a lot of different staff members and external forces trying to be taken into consideration it's a fairly conservative budget it doesn't show monumental growth it doesn't show major staff growth we are currently pursuing National Science Foundation monies in partnership with a couple of other universities um, looking at distance le learning and telemedicine so we're not waiting around trying to see how we get impacted the problem is going to be the timing the budget cuts are going to come and we're going to have to be impacted by those before we'll know about any of this other grant funding so we're at a very pivotal time a very pivotal stage in our evolution and the growth and the programming that we're able to offer and so you're exactly correct i mean i think the budget that we have right now assumes a fairly steady state for us However, you know, we all know that we'll likely be coming back to you at the next board meeting uh, with an adjusted situation. I was listening to the governor's brief a little bit ago about the need for the changes in higher ed in the way that courses are delivered, the way that we are more responsive to the racial um, diversity and the socioeconomic diversity of students. And I think NCI given what you've just heard a little bit about is gonna be really well placed for that and also for being a, a very integral player in the workforce community and worker retraining as people start to get back to work after the COVID-19 layoffs and furloughs and, and downturns. Um, and NCI is positioned very well to be able to take part of that. We're grateful to the governor for a little bit of gear funding. It came out of the CARES um, package that the state got. We got a, a tiny little bit of that for each one of the higher ed institutions. Very grateful for that. Happy to have that influx. It'll be about 35,000, but that will help us immensely as we take over the building and, and start to do some other things in response to this. So I apologize for the lengthy comments, but I, I, you're exactly right. We probably will come back to you with an adjusted budget in the long run, but we are, we are doubly concerned that it's not only just the budget cuts, but it's a, um, it's really, a, it's going to be a momentum cut if we're not successful with maintaining um, what we have. And, you know, we can always deal with, we'd love to have more, but I think our, our main goal right now is preservation because without, if we end up having to cut staff, depending on how hard we have to cut, we'll also have to cut some of the programs that we're just starting and a couple that have major corporate sponsors in tow. And so that's quite concerning for me. Um, and I would hope it, you know, would be for our board members as well. But um, thank you for recognizing that. And we'd like to reserve the, the opportunity to pull everybody back together if need be at a moment's notice to have those kind of discussions. So with that, I'll turn it back to you. And I'm certainly sensitive to that. Um, you know, and we've had uh, some, we, we had a very good budget going in this set, this, uh, economic downturn will certainly set us back in terms of, I, I expect a percentage uh, across the board cut to begin with uh, for members of the board, uh, where it goes from there. Uh, we're hopeful that uh, what we're accomplishing here will be funded. I think we can also hope that with an improved relationship with our foundation, uh, the foundation's influx of uh, monies from the transfer of the building to the government, to the state and to the NCI, uh, that we may be able to make up that shortfall and that that shortfall will be temporary, uh, perhaps just this year, and we can get back on track next year and, uh, and continue these programs. But I agree with the executive director that we have to, we, we are on the cutting edge of some incredible programs and she can't tell you everything, but I know. And uh, if I told you, 
uh, you'd be as excited as I am about what we're about to uh, embark on in, in, a, in a direction that is unique as an educational uh, opportunity for our people in our region and outside our region, but also in putting NCI in a position uh, to lead in the 21st century when it comes to workforce training and, and education, as we've always talked about. Uh, we're finally seeing that come to fruition. So I know every uh, member of the General Assembly here will be advocating for, uh, uh, for making sure that those cuts are not going to be as severe, um, but we have to anticipate that that's going to occur, and then we need to sit down with some of our other uh, financial partners and see how uh, that that's not going to affect what we're trying to do, because I think it's mission critical what Karen Jackson has put in place and, and the things that are going to roll uh, out, that we're going to roll out and, and bring to NCI will uh, uh, will just amaze you. So uh, with that, uh, I think prudence has always been a part of this board. We're trying to, to do good things the, the right way. And I think uh, all of us will understand if we have to come back and, and Christina has to say, well, we had X number of dollars for this, but now it's Y. So... Uh, let's just hope. Uh, let's just hope it's minimal and we can get through it. But you know, numbers. Uh, Christina is uh, great at what she does, and I know she'll make uh, she'll make the best use of every dollar we get. Thank you, Executive Director. Christina. Okay, so I guess I'm up. Um, in order to be cognizant of the time, I'm going to keep the review at the overall categories. Um, on the packet that you received, we have pages five, which is the general fund appropriation. We'll begin with page five. I'll discuss the 2019-2020 uh, projected expenses through 630-2020. The general fund appropriation monies received were 2629835 the total program related expenses through 630 is estimated at 1,127, which is 107,000 over budget for that category. And as you're aware of the turnover in staff for NCI monies were available in salaries and related as it is under budget of 92.5. Um, NCI was without a de designated marketing position since November and determined the need for communication consulting services um, to review NCI's brand and brand awareness, which Karen mentioned earlier. Um, the administrative and office expenses were over budget by 5,284 due to unforeseen additional workers' comp fees and increased agency service charges. Information technology expenses were over budget by 17,395. Um, part of that was remaining expenses in relation to the server issues, which um, came from a previous year and the offset was recognized under the building lease payments. The travel accommodations were under budget by 49,998. This is due to the change in staff and limited travel due to COVID. Is there any questions on the 2019-2020 budget? Okay, we'll go on to the 2021 proposed budget for general fund. The program related expenses for the um, budget category are 1057633 with the building transfer occurring and the facility maintenance and operations are under review. The full amount um, of the Baldwin lease payment is listed as a separate line item. The um, one thing that I wanted to note was the building rental. So with the transfer of the building, with the contract facility management company, what we did just to begin discussion was we included the full 383,000 that was designated for the lease. And we added the line item contract facility management company. Um, that is till we determine with DGS how all of the expenses will be handled but we, we will be revising this in the future. Um, salaries and related expenses are listed at 1,423. There's an increase in accordance with the budget appropriation and increases in estimated benefits with new rates. Administrative and office expenses are at 32,115 to reflect the current agency year charges. The difference on the information technology expenses are 100,340 100, and are in line with the previous year's budget. 
and travel and accommodations has been reduced to 26,000 uh, given the COVID restrictions. Are there any questions on the 2020-2021 proposed budget? No questions? Y'all are awfully quiet. Okay. The non-general fund. I just have a question for Karen on these things. Have you started to put together uh, an idea of where you're going to cut and when 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 that comes along or where we where we're going to have savings? That's yeah, Christine and I have already talked about that. Some of the some of the pieces that are new programming that we are starting may be able to be reimbursed out of some grant funding that we have from the, already have from the Tobacco Commission, such as the Center of Excellence for Manufacturing. Um, and so we're looking at how we might be able to move the deck chairs around. Um, the ultimate goal will will be preservation of staff. Um, so we will look at everything beyond that. And we're putting a lot of pressure on fundraising and trying to make sure that we are applying for everything that we possibly can to see if we can bring in outside dollars. So it's a combination um, of all of the above, but you know, as we talked about, the bottom line is the preservation of the staff that we have and, and the service to the to the students and to the to the citizens that we you know, it's in our codified mission what we need to do, but we need staff in order to do that. So that's the prevailing way that we're going to look at this, whether or not we get to preserve that. If we get a 25% budget cut, then we're going to have to rethink that whole methodology. Well, no, it's, that's the point I was trying to bring up. I agree with that completely. We already thin staffed as, as uh, before we start this conversation. So, okay, I'll let you go back, Christina. Okay, if you'll look at page eight, which is the non-general fund, the non-general funds um, are the fund that manages NCI grants and revenue generating programs. So you'll see the revenue that we were are anticipating for 2019-2020 is 584,942. That does include grant funds from the Tobacco Commission. Um, all program related expenses in non-general fund is related specifically to these revenue generating programs such as our telehealth um, that John had presented earlier and the COE which Brian Pace talked about a little bit earlier. So for the year 2019-22 we are expecting uh, or anticipating 231,000 in expenses which will give us a balance of about 353,000 in the fund. And with that carrying over, we are at anticipating total revenue for next year through our non-general fund to be 1,190,000. That does include a large amount of grant revenue from the Tobacco Commission to wrap up our COE and um, additional opportunities. Total expenses, for the year will be estimated at 749,000, which we're hoping to have a balance remaining of 440. This budget will change as we gain new revenue sources and um, new proje uh, project expenses. Um, so that is my quick overview of the 2019-2020 um, revenue and expenses and the 2020-2021 budget. Is there any questions? Richard, don't you have questions? Nope, I was just gonna make a motion to approve the budget. Okay, uh, Christina, is action required by the board today on this, on what you've told us? Yes, I would think that we need to have an approved budget before 7-1. And uh, Karen, do you concur with that as well? I mean subject to check as we like to say in the state corporation commission when we have trial uh this is always subject to change i guess but karen do you concur i do okay uh we have a motion uh, made by the vice chairman to approve and adopt 
uh, the representations made by Ms. Reed, uh, both on paper and uh, here on Zoom. And uh, is there a second? Richard Krauss just second, but he's not a member. Is there, can I get a second? I'll second. Thank you. Hi, right, Naomi, it's great to see you. It's always good to see you. I love you dearly. All right, motion being properly uh, uh, made and seconded by uh, Ms. Hodge Muse. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, um, all in favor signify by saying aye, or do you want to- Aye. We have call. to do a roll call, sir. Okay, so uh, if, if uh, the roll could be called right now, I'd appreciate it greatly. And just unmute, uh, say yes or no, and then mute back, I guess. Delegate Les Adams. Aye. Richard Hall. Aye. Tanya Foreman. Senator Emmett Hanger. Aye. Dr. Weldon Hill. Aye. Naomi Hodgemuse. Aye. Delegate Rodney Willett. Aye. Delegate Kathleen Murphy. Senator Phil Stanley. Aye. Renee Tweedy. Janice Wilkins. We have seven. I was trying to unmute myself. Seven eyes, um, zero nays. The motion passes. Pardon me, I'm not very electronically uh, astute. <laughs> All right, so we uh, move from the budget update. I remember hearing branding and marketing uh, from Karen when she was discussing that when I was listening on the phone but couldn't talk. Um, have we gone over that, Ms. Jackson? We did. All right, the next uh, new partnerships update. I think we got that. We did. Anybody else have anything else on this paper that we haven't gone over? Karen? We covered it all, I believe, sir. Okay, so uh, there's nothing left on the agenda. Um, are there any... Uh, matters, new matters that any member of this board would like to bring up at this time. Uh, what I'd ask is maybe that Dr. Weldon Hill could play a little riff. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the nice drum kit behind him. Uh, jump on the skins and maybe play us out. <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> well, and this, this will give me an opportunity to really say um, uh, when new members are brought on, uh, old members sometimes leave uh, and are, you know, have timed out and are not reappointed. I, I wanted to take just a couple minutes, if I can, um, to really thank Dr. Hill, who, who has been a mentor to me for so long. Uh, he has been down on the board. He has been a great advisor, a good friend, and somebody who's really cared about education in Southside, Southwest Virginia in our rural and, and urban areas uh, that we have down in here. So it's going to be a real loss um, to have uh, the jazziest uh, member that one could ever have on any board in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Um, and, uh, and I wish him all the success. And I, and I do hope that uh, uh, not just our paths will cross, but uh, we continue to be uh, good friends and, and, and talk. You are a blessing, Weldon. <laughs> and, uh, and, and just um, a voice of reason and also one of, uh, in the education world, which is a rare thing, as I've found, and Weldon told me this early on when I started saying, we we're going to make these big changes here at NCI, and we're going to get traditional education to run along with us. And he, he looked at me, patted me on the shoulder and said, yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, but he had the uh, he had the vision and the ability to think outside the box uh, when a lot in those uh, traditional education uh, institutions do not. And so he's been just so valuable and and uh, we're really going to miss you, Weldon, and, and um, oh, man. 
I hope to have <laughs> serve with you in the future, my friend. Would you like to address the board uh, as this is your last time we will ever recognize you? <laughs> <laughs> no more than to just say uh, thank you guys for the opportunity to serve. It's been a real pleasure, um, and I will miss it a lot. But I'll I'll, I'll keep in touch with with, with uh, Senator, and we can figure it out. <laughs> you tell my friend, and can't wait, and can't wait for the new adventures that you and I will go on. All right, <laughs> and uh, and certainly I also want to thank Janice Wilkins. Uh, I don't know if she's on here today. Uh, but certainly, and before I go to Janice Wilkins, I do want to say, I think if Weldon Hill knew that there was a Zoom meeting where he could appeal, appear by video at these meetings, um, he would have loved it. So uh, <laughs> he would definitely uh, be happy with that as well. I've lost you guys on my screen. Can you still hear me? Yes, I can still hear you. Okay. Can you see me? Yes, I can see you. This is Chris Niblett. Oh, thank you, Chris. All right. I also want to thank Janice Wilkins, who, who served on the board. Uh, for a term. Uh, unfortunately, with uh, Ms. Wilkins, is she's, uh, she's retiring and leaving. Chairman Stanley, you, you're muted. What's happening to my computer? Can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So, my computer just went black screen on me, this brand new computer. So I wanna thank Janice um, for her service as well. Uh, she was uh, just so insightful and, and very participatory and, and always has had the best interest of Patrick County and Henry County in the city of Martinsville uh, first and, and foremost. So, um, uh, so I wanna say thank you to her. And then of course, uh, um, Ms. Foreman is leaving, which is just, uh, Tanya Foreman has been great. She of course, uh, She's got a huge job in terms of the um, educational outreach of, uh, uh, of her company in, in terms of uh, uh, what they do and certainly the importance that they have in our, uh, in our area. Eastman's been great and she's been very insightful. Uh, she led us, if you all remember who's still on the board, uh, down to uh, Tennessee where we saw how education could be done in a different way and how it could matter. And so that was exceptional. And, and we wish her all Sycamore Limited uh, release last November of its Christmas cookie winter deal. <laughs> That's not me. <laughs> but if you want to tell us what the Christmas cookie deal is, I'm all ears. Um, so, uh, and finally, of course, um, I want to again thank uh, Delegate Marshall and, and Delegate Poindexter for everything they've done for us and the selfless uh, dedication and sacrifice they've made to make this thing happen. So. Uh, thank you all as you leave this board. Uh, uh, we will not forget the efforts that you put forth for NCI and for our children, our young people, our displaced workers, our transitional, transformational students. And uh, we will not forget uh, you at all. And please, uh, uh, please make sure that you stay in touch with all of us. If anybody who is leaving the board would like to speak, please feel free to do so now. Okay. All right. You can still hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Because I just can't see you guys anymore. <laughs> um, so with that, uh, is there any more business that uh, should come before this uh, board of directors? Karen, do you have any business before, the, before we leave? I do not, sir. Thank you. Okay. All right. And with that, uh, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. No, Weldon, we're going to leave you on here. You can't make <laughs> No, you can't go, Weldon. No, the motion has been made by uh, Dr. Hill. Is there a second? A second. Second being made by Ms. Hodgmuse, I'm guessing. Um, yes. I can't see you, my dear. I'm sorry. And uh, that is not a debatable motion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 This meeting, and this meeting is adjourned, but I want to say I hope that it's the last Zoom meeting uh, that the next time, even if we have to open the uh, divider and the uh, Lacey uh, lecture hall and sit 40 feet, yes. back, let's do it in person, okay? Absolutely. Hopefully. 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 And welcome new members. And with that, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. God bless everybody. God Stay bless. safe. Take care. Be safe. Thank you. Oh.